Christmas is considered by many as the biggest Christian holiday of the year. In fact, it's the celebration of the birth of Jesus, right? As Bible-believing Christians, we of course believe in the birth of Jesus Christ. As Bible believers, we believe that we have the most accurate account of Jesus' birth. We just don't believe in the idolatry of it. But learning why we serve whom we serve, and learning the truth and history behind our faith, that's important. So let's jump in. The meaning of Christmas. Very quickly, let's go over where the word Christmas even comes from. This word comes from the Middle English word Christmas, which came from the Old English word Christmasse. This literally means Christ Mass. The Mass, as you know, is a Catholic ritual. As you will see later in this video, this holiday is heavily influenced, if not flat out created, by the Roman Catholic Church. The History and Formation of Christmas Hundreds of years before the coming of Jesus Christ, many European cultures celebrated what's called the Winter Solstice. Using our calendar months, this would take place around December. In many of these cultures though, these celebrations had a lot to do with the sun and the pagan sun god. But, like most so-called Christian events that has its roots in paganism, the granddaddy of them all was from Rome. In Rome, they celebrated the holiday of Saturnalia, as well as celebrating their sun god, Mithra. This was the most sacred time of the year for these Romans. But what is Saturnalia? This holiday was obviously named after Saturn, a Roman name for the biblical character Nimrod. Nimrod is the son of Cush, who was the son of Ham, who was the son of Noah. Nimrod infamously married his own mother, Semiramis, known in other cultures as Ishtar. Nimrod later became the founder of the first world empire at Babel, soon to be named Babylon. After Nimrod, or Osiris, or Saturn, died in 2167 BC, Semiramis promoted the belief that Nimrod was a god. She claimed that there were full-grown evergreen trees springing out from the roots of a dead tree stump. Semiramis stated that on the anniversary of Nimrod's birth, Nimrod would visit these evergreen trees and leave gifts under it. This birthday fell on the winter solstice at the end of December. Any of this ring any bells? But you're probably wondering, how did all of these pagan rituals get mixed in with Christianity? To figure this out, we must look at the roots of the Roman Catholic Church. At 312 AD, the Roman Emperor Constantine converted from paganism to what's known today as Roman Catholicism. After converting, he tried to Christianize the empire, which still mainly consisted of pagans. Of course, people don't just ditch their faith that easily, and he knew this. So he and his followers incorporated several pagan holidays and traditions and made their own holidays. The person who chose December 25th as what's known today as Christmas was none other than Pope Julius I, the immediate successor to Emperor Constantine. What better way to get people to convert to your religion than to incorporate their rituals into yours? Myths about Christmas Section 1. The wise men went to the manger to see baby Jesus. The wise men actually never went to the manger. It's important to keep in mind that the wise men are not the same people as the shepherds who are mentioned in Luke chapter 2. Jesus was born in a manger, yes. And when he was born, the angel of the Lord appeared unto the shepherds in the field. We see this in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And after the angel told them about the Savior, the shepherds then went to Bethlehem to see Christ. It was these guys who went and saw baby Jesus at the manger. The wise men, on the other hand, are mentioned in Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. The events in Matthew chapter 2 verse 11 occurred after the events in Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 38. The Bible says here that the wise men went to the house and found the young child. Notice here it says house, not manger. Mary ended up having baby Jesus in a manger because the inns were full at the time. But in Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, it very clearly states house. This obviously was after Jesus was moved from a manger to a house. Also, this verse refers to Jesus as a young child, as opposed to babe, like in Luke chapter 2 verses 12 and 16. So the nativity scenes that we're so accustomed to seeing at this time of the year, they're actually incorrect. The shepherds were not led by a star. They were led to the manger by an angel. 
the wise men who did follow the star were not present at the manger when Jesus was born. You may be thinking, but come on, these are just semantics. Who really cares whether these pictures are wrong and who was there at the manger? Maybe you're right, but like we mentioned before, facts are still facts. They're important, and we should always make our choices after learning as much as we can about a subject. But this last myth, it may hit you a little harder than the other one. Section 2. Christ was born in December. Perhaps you've heard somewhere before that Christmas isn't actually the exact date of Jesus' birth. But a much lesser known fact is that we can, in fact, figure out when Jesus was actually born. Let's go back to Luke chapter 2 verse 8. There are shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Let's think about this for a second. Shepherds, out in the fields, with their flock, overnight? This is December, one of the coldest months of the year. People don't sleep outside in December. Shepherds, during this time of the year, take their sheep into barns and sleep indoors. For this reason alone, winter is highly unlikely to be the season of Jesus' birth. But let's get more specific. Luke chapter 3 verses 21 through 23. These verses refer to Jesus Christ getting baptized. In verse 23, we learn that Jesus turned 30 years old. Now, looking at John chapters 1 and 2, we also know that a couple months after Jesus' baptism, there was a Passover. A Passover, as many of you know, is an annual event that occurs in the beginning of spring usually around March. So, using the baptism of Jesus and the Passover as our reference points, let's calculate Jesus' date of birth. Let's start backwards from when Jesus died at 33 and a half years of age. Between Jesus' last Passover, we'll call this Passover number three, and Jesus' death, there are several things that occur that account for a couple of months. Similarly, between the baptism and that first Passover since the baptism, we'll call this Passover number one, Several things happen that can amount to a couple of months. This is why we get the half in 33 and a half. Now, we know that there are a couple of months in between the baptism and Passover number one. In addition to that, we know that Passovers always come in the beginning of spring. So what does this mean? This means that Jesus' birthday is at least a couple of months before the beginning of spring. And that means that Jesus had to be born in either winter or fall. And using our previous analysis of winter simply being too cold for the shepherds to be sleeping outside, we can conclude that it was most likely fall when Jesus was born. But let's really make sure of that by getting even more specific. Let's look at a man named Zacharias. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now let's turn to Luke chapter 1 verse 24. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months saying. Now, during a time called the course of Abiah, the angel announces to Zacharias that he will have a son. This son is John the Baptist. So what is this course of Abiah? To put it simply, there are different courses of the priests. These courses are mentioned in 1 Chronicles chapter 24. In this list of courses, the course of Abiah is the eighth course. This course occurs twice every calendar year, in June and in December. So basically, this means that John the Baptist was conceived in either June or December. If he was conceived in June, fast forward nine months of pregnancy and he would be born in March of the following year. If he was conceived in December, fast forward nine months of pregnancy and he would be born in September of the following year. Now, we know that John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. Luke chapter 1 verse 26. In the sixth month, God sends Gabriel to Mary. This sixth month refers to the time since John the Baptist was conceived. We know this because of Luke chapter 1 verse 36, which states, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. So, putting all of those facts together, we can conclude that Jesus had to have been born in either September or March. Then the final question becomes, which is it? September or March? Which of the two courses of Abiah do we calculate from? This is a simple part. Jesus could not have been born in March. Remember, March is when spring begins, and we know that Jesus died after the Passover that year. 
We figured out earlier that Jesus had to have been born a couple months before spring. So if Jesus could not have been born in March, he had to have been born in September. As we mentioned previously, this is not a video in which we show semantics and technicalities just for the sake of criticism. If you can use something for the Lord, whether that be Easter or Christmas, use it. But be honest with yourself about it. To do that, you need to know history and facts. I hope you learned something from the video. Thank you for watching.